Here we are on the Ruby on Rails site. Let's go ahead and go to Guides, and then Getting Started with Rails. So let's go ahead and scroll down to Section 3 here, and this is where it's going to cover installing Rails. So first off, we're going to need Ruby and SQLite 3. So let's go ahead and get started with installing Ruby. So you can go ahead and type in your terminal or command line or PowerShell Ruby dash dash version. If it's installed, you should get a version returned. If it isn't, let's go ahead and go click on the Ruby installer link. And from here, let's go ahead and click download. I've gone ahead and just gone ahead and downloaded this top one here, um, which at the moment is the Ruby Dev Kit 3.3.4-1 for 64-bit. Once that's downloaded, you can go to your downloads and go to the executable and double click it to run. That will open up your install wizard and you can just go right through this and let it install. Once installed, you should be able to, from PowerShell, type in Ruby dash dash version and you should be able to see the installed version. You can also do this from command line with the same command, Ruby dash dash version. Okay, so now back at the guide, let's go ahead and install SQLite 3. So again, you should be able to type SQLite 3 dash dash version in your PowerShell or command line to see if, you, uh, to see if it's already installed. If not, Let's go ahead and go to the SQLite 3 website. And then let's go ahead and head over to download. And what we're interested in are these two pre-compiled binaries for Windows. So let's go ahead and download both of these zips. And from here, we're actually going to do a couple different things now that they're downloaded. So, first off, let's go to our to our root directory, which for us will be just local disk C, and we're going to go ahead and create a new folder, and this folder will be called SQLite. Now, once that's done, we're going to want to copy and paste all of the all the files that we just downloaded into our new empty folder and you should end up having these five files in your SQLite folder. So that's going to be two from the SQLite DLL and then three from the SQLite tools. Okay, now once that's done, let's go ahead and go to your environment, your system variables, and then go to environment variables, and then we're going to go ahead and click on path, and we're going to click edit. Now from here, at the very bottom of this, we can just click new, and we're going to add the path to that folder we just created holding all those SQLite files. Once that's done, we can click OK, then we can click OK, and you can click Apply over here, or OK as well. Going back to our terminal, you should be able to now type SQLite 3 dash dash version, and it should print out the version. Now if that doesn't happen, you may need to restart your PowerShell or your command line, or just restart this whole thing, um, because since we added these, uh, these are new environment variables to the path, you might need to restart these to be able to see those new environment variables. Okay, so going back to the Ruby on Rails guide, now that we have SQLite 3 and Ruby, we can go ahead and install the Rails environment, so gem install Rails. Now this will take a little bit longer if this is your first time installing this um, because there's more to install. Okay, and once that's done, you should be able to type Rails dash dash version. 
and the rail the installed rails version should print out your environment should now be all set up for ruby on rails development in windows